For Kierkegaard, the concept of approximation is very closely related to historical knowledge and objectivity. Kierkegaard saw that many thinkers of his age tried to find various ways to resolve the paradoxes of Christianity. They were trying to find ways to prove Christianity theoretically and historically. Kierkegaard was horrified by this. He thought such thinkers were missing the point of Christianity. The problem as he saw it was that you cannot have direct access to the past. No matter how hard you might try as a historian to gain historical knowledge, what you gain can be no more than an approximation. You can only know what roughly happened in the past. Your historical knowledge can never be 100% certain. This is a problem because Kierkegaard thinks that Christianity is concerned with personal happiness. And even more radically, he thought that Christianity is concerned with eternal happiness. So the question that he raises is, how can you build eternal happiness on historical knowledge? Or how can you build happiness on scientific knowledge or objective knowledge? Life is not objective, it's something that you live. There is a subjective aspect to it. Science is amazing, but whatever it tells you, it's not 100% certain. Science functions very well in its own domain. But when it comes to living, we need something more than approximation. The knowledge he was concerned with was historical knowledge as well as scientific knowledge. He wasn't trying to undermine science. However, he was trying to say existence occupies a domain beyond science. The inadequacy of human knowledge is perfectly manifested in historical knowledge. Since we cannot have a 100% accurate picture of the past, it makes no sense to take historical knowledge as something that would prove Christianity. It could even more radically be said that Christianity even escapes historical knowledge. It can only be grasped by faith, according to him. The thinkers Kierkegaard took issue with thought that if they could somehow resolve the paradoxes of Christianity, or if somehow they could prove Christianity historically, then surely people would start to believe more firmly. This for Kierkegaard was completely preposterous. Because Christianity does not demand objective knowledge to the point that the subject is neglected. In Christianity, the subject is interested infinitely. Not only is there the issue of eternal happiness, but also there is the issue of personal interest. And the existing individual is infinitely interested in his or her happiness. Kierkegaard is referred to as an irrationalist. The reason is that the truths of Christianity are to be located in the absurd. They escape reason and human rationality. They cannot be proven. At some point he says that even if the historicity of Christianity turned out to be true, it would still be impossible to establish more than an approximation. At this point, I would like to read you a few citations from Kierkegaard that deal with the concept of approximation. He says, With regard to the historical, the greatest certainty is only an approximation. Then he goes on to say that an approximation is too little to build one's happiness on. Elsewhere he says, Every iota is of infinite value for the infinitely interested passion. The fault inheres not in the infinitely interested passion, but in this, that its object has become an approximation object. Here we see two themes. I talked about one of them, which was that the person in existence is infinitely interested in his or her happiness. The other theme that we see here is that a person might become infinitely interested in, say, historical knowledge. He might become very passionate about it. But the problem is not this infinite passion that the individual manifests. 
Rather, the problem is that the person has become infinitely interested in an approximation object. Approximation object is basically some non-transcendental object in the world that, be, uh, that we might become infinitely interested in. There is another citation which is related to this concept of approximation object. It says, the fact that the whole age has become devoid of passion does not entitle it to laugh. The ludicrous aspect of the zealot was that his infinite passion thrust itself upon a wrong object, an approximation object. But the good aspect of him was that he did have passion. So what we see here is that Kierkegaard very much appreciates a person who has infinite passion or who is passionately interested in something. A person who has passion represents something great for him. The problem is not the passion. The problem is that sometimes passion can be misdirected or that we might become interested in the wrong object. That which has become the object of our passion is the issue, not passion itself. The final citation that I would like to read you goes on like this. Speculative thought is objective, and objectively there is no truth for an existing individual, but only an approximation, since by existing he is prevented from becoming entirely objective. So we see here that Kierkegaard puts the individual in the realm of subjectivity. The truths that the individual are concerned with are subjective truths. Whatever certainty or truth that the individual, the existing individual might find in the outside world is only an approximation. Again, this only makes sense if you realize that there is a difference between you as an object and you as a living person. Then he goes on to say that Christianity is subjective. And this is where we see the appeal of Christianity for Kierkegaard. He says Christianity is subjective. The inwardness of faith in the believer is the truth's eternal decision. Objectively, there is no truth. An objective knowledge about the truth or the truths of Christianity is precisely untruth. Christianity was appealing to Kierkegaard because it allowed him to go deep inside himself and find personal subjective truths that were important to him and relevant to him as an individual.